Kyola Dev National Park is a 29 square kilometer reserve and is a mosaic of dry grasslands, woodlands, woodland swamps, and wetland. It is set to house 375 species of birds, 200 migratory birds from all over the world, and 100 birds which migrate from within the country, and 75 to 100 local birds. This is a slide to show the history of Kyola Dev National Park. The closest international airport is Delhi, which is 184 kilometers from the park. It is well connected by rail and road. This is a map of the park to show all the areas and how they have planned it out. We visited the Kyola Dev National Park from 17th to 21st January 2022. To our bad luck, whole of 18th and 19th and pre-lunch 20th were foggy, cloudy and extremely cold. Had booked the tourist lodge in advance so did not cancel. Did manage to get a few good shots though thanks to the camera. From Muradabad, we opted for the route via Dasna on to Eastern Peripheral Expressway and then State Expressway bypassing Mathura, though this route is 100 kilometers longer than via Aligarh, as former is an expressway and a latter a single lane road. Rajasthan tourism is fair enough with bookings online. Staying inside gives a wonderful feeling of staying in the jungle. In this video, I will share the shots of the birds which I took which were which are seen there and a few animals with their activities which we observe. Yellow-footed green pigeon, Harial, the state bird of Maharashtra, is a shy pigeon unlike rock pigeon, has yellow feet and has amazingly blue colored iris with pink at the periphery. These are a few shots which I took there of this beautiful bird. The second bird we spotted was spotted owlet. This owl is largely nocturnal. It normally comes out before dusk and retires by sunrise to its roost in a tree hole or a branch, where pairs or small family groups huddle together as seen here. Iris is yellow of this Vahan of Lakshmi. Owls as predators keep a balance in our ecosystem by keeping a check on rodent and insect population. I was waiting for this owlet to fly towards me for a super shot, but the cold prevented it. It was all cuddled up with its family, but seeing me flew and sat on this branch, slowly opening and closing its eyes, waiting for me to go away, probably guarding the family. The third bird we spot spotted was the darter or the snake bird, which is a water bird. The origin of the name is apparent for while swimming only the neck appears above water, so the bird looks like a snake ready to strike. It hunts by spearing the fish and other small prey using its sharp slender beak, obvious from these photographs that I have taken. Darters swim with their webbed feet and pursue their prey fish underwater and spear their prey by rapidly stretching out their neck. For larger fish, they use both their jaws and use the lower jaw on smaller fish. They bring their capture to the surface of water, toss it backwards and engulf it head first, unlike ducks, ospreys and pelicans who coat their feathers with oil from their uropineal gland. The darter does not have a waterproof feathers. Their feathers get soaked up upon immersion in water, therefore they cannot stay floating on water for long periods of time. So they dry themselves up by coming out and flapping their wings sitting with their wings towards the sun and face away from the sun. It was a visual treat to watch them do such sort of hunting and I succeeded in recording quite a few sequences which I share here, one for a larger fish, the second one for a smaller fish. This is how they spear, then they flip the fish in the air and then swallow it whole with the head end of fish being the first one to getting swallowed. The great white pelican is a royal looking bird. To me, they look like fairies floating on water, delicately lifting their gowns to prevent them from getting wet. It's an interesting story how I was made to see these birds from close quarters. By the guide, with all shush as we entered a prohibited area, and the funny thing was he was cautious that no one followed us for then the crowd would bring in attention and make the birds fly away 
as also he would be taken to task by the authorities. He closed the point of entry with twigs that had thorns which he had removed for us to pass through. I was a bit apprehensive when there was an overcast sky for two and a half out of the four days that we spent in Bharatpur, for was not sure how the photographs would be without sunlight. But I realized that those days acted as a golden hour, that is, the quality of photographs I got was similar to what one gets during the dusk and dawn, with a beautiful blue tint due to the fog. Pelicans are large water birds characterized by a long beak and a large throat pouch used for catching prey and draining water from the scooped up contents before swallowing. They are gregarious birds traveling in flocks, hunting cooperatively and breeding colonially. The young live on regurgitated food obtained by thrusting their bills down the parents' gullet. Pelicans have a network of air sacs under their skin, situated across the ventral surface, including the throat, breast, and the undersides of the wings. They also have air sacs in their bones. The air sacs are connected to the airways of the respiratory system, and the pelican can keep its air sacs inflated by closing its glottis. But how? The air sacs are inflated is not clear. The air sacs serve to keep the pelicans remarkably buoyant in the water. The Indian pond heron, which is seen here, sat quietly watching the cormorants, egrets, and snakebirds fishing. Then it started its own search and did succeed in catching a big fish and hid in the bushes, where I chased it to get my shot. Its appearance is transformed from its dull colors when it takes a flight, when the white of the wings makes it prominent as seen in the pic. Pond herons are usually silent, but may can make a hoarse croak in alarm when flushed or near their nests. They are solitary foragers. They have been noted to pick up crumbs of bread and drop them on the water surface to bait fishes. The Hindustani phrase Bagla Bhagat has been used to describe a wolf in sheep's clothing or a hypocrite appearing like a meditating saint and has been derived from these creatures who are considered half blind as they stand still and flush only at the last moment when approached. This is a fruit bat or flying fox or megabat and belongs to a megabat series. It's a mammal with Neokov being in news and creating a fast fear, hope the mutation does not occur that would make it enter human body as also no one uses the information to create a variant for a bio war. The megabat family contains the largest bat species. They can be differentiated from other bats due to their dog-like faces, clawed second digits and reduced uropatagium. Megabats have several adaptations for flight, including rapid oxygen consumption, the ability to sustain heart rates of more than 700 beats per minute, and large lung volumes. Most species are primarily frugivores, and several are nectarivores. Other less common food resources include leaves, pollen, twigs, and bark. A quarter of all species are listed as threatened, mainly due to the habitat destruction and overhunting. Megabats are a popular food source in some areas, leading to population declines and extinction. Megabats use smell, find food sources like fruit and nectar. They have keen senses of smell that rival that of the domestic dog. As with nearly all bat species, males do not assist females in parental care. The young stay with their mothers until they are weaned. Many megabat species are highly social. They can differentiate between sweet and bitter tastes. They also have specific dialect for communication. Megabats play an important role in seed dispersal. They are not suspected to be vectors of coronavirus. Their teeth were used as a currency by a tribe, which had to be taught to hunt sustainably 
to prevent them from endanger endangering the population of bats. This is a purple heron, which is a beautiful bird which looks like a snake with wings. It is beautifully colored and I always confused it with darter and grey heron. It stands like a grey heron to catch a prey not like darter which swims to search its prey and then dries its wings. They breed colonially and they love to live in their own mohalla in heronaries. I clicked the grey heron and the purple heron in the same frame so as to get the difference. I hope it is obvious in this picture. This is Ekantwasi green heron, which is intolerant of other birds, including conspecifics. So when feeding, they are not seen to forage in groups. They typically stand still on shore or in shallow water or perch upon branches and await prey. Sometimes they drop food, insects and other small objects on the water surface to attract the fish making them one of the few known tool using species. This feeding method has led some to title the green and closely related striated heron as among the world's most intelligent birds, they are able to hover briefly to catch the prey. Satto, our guide, spotted black bittern and pointed out, but by the time I could mark it, it flew away. He explained that it is a rarely sighted bird and it hides itself. Well, that was the first day and I was excited and filled with energy. Two days went by and we could not spot it again. The third day again he went about exploring the isolated part of wetland with his binoculars peeping in deep inside the vegetation in the marshes. I was extremely tired, running fever, but the zeal of sightings was pushing me. I sat down as the exploration on foot was too much for me by then. He did sight one, but it too soon hid itself. He carried on with his search and sighted yellow bittern, which too is a shy bird. Shh! Finger on lips action went all around as I got ready to click. And to our luck, the bittern did not move and continued with its search, probably was too hungry or had not seen us and I got quite a few close-up shots as I moved slowly towards it, very well understanding the difference between bittern and pond heron, the long neck clearly seen in a shot. Yellow bitterns tend to stay in thick wetland vegetations and can be difficult to observe. They also are often most active at dawn and dusk or are nocturnal, making observation even more difficult. They forage by moving slowly through the wetland vegetation or waiting at the water's edge, thrusting their long bill out to capture prey when prey is spotted. Imagine Mr. Bean in flight with all his clumsiness and the yellow bittern's flight is exactly the same. Though I could not catch the flight, but I did see it fly. Its wings automatically flail about helplessly as it makes a panic-stricken landing in the reeds. It sat there, looking at and admiring its own reflection. Egrets are herons that have white or buff plumage, developing fine plumes, usually milky white, during the breeding season. Egrets are not a biologically distinct group from herons and have the same build. Different types of egrets, mainly white, Great white egret, intermediate egret, little egret, and cattle egret were spotted by me. The intermediate is smaller, with neck length a little less than the body length, a slightly domed head, and a shorter, thicker bill. The greater egret has a noticeable kick near the middle of its neck, and the top of its longer bill nearly aligns with the flat top of its head. Close up. Great egret's gape line extends behind the eye, while the intermediate's is less pointed and ends below the eye. The intermediate tends to stalk upright with neck is extended forward. The great is more patient, often adopting a sideways leaning one-eyed stance. Little egrets have yellow-soled feet and black bills. They often run after fish in shallow waters and it was interesting watching them running to fish in shallow water. 
yellow soled feet too were very attractive. Breeding birds have long nuptial plumes on the back of their heads, cormorants. In India, according to forest officials, these birds, like turtles, are natural scavengers feeding on floating flesh, insects, besides fish. They have been observed to feed on floor pills and rice puffs offerings to leave Ganga clean. In winters, they migrate to plains and fly back to higher reaches in the Himalayas in winters. The Indian cormorants have slender bodies and their neck and tail are of equal length. They have beautifully colored greenish blue eyes, seen very well here. The great cormorant is a heavy set bird with a long thick neck, blocky head and heavy hooked bill. The legs are short, the tail fairly long and the wings broad. Adults are blackish overall with white throat and yellowish skin around the bill. When breeding, adults have a square patch of white on the thigh and white neck feathers. Juveniles are brownish with a whitish throat and belly with some brownish streaking at the edges. They were used for fishing in the past. Great cormorants often hold the wings open when they are out of the water. They typically face into the wind and turn their backs to the sun. This behavior probably serves to warm them up and help dry their plumage. It may also aid in the digestion of prey. Great cormorants are found throughout the world, inhabiting mostly freshwater rivers and lakes. The claw of greater cormorant middle toe is pectinated or serrated like a comb. It's thought that the birds use this for preening the plumage. This pick is of an Indian cormorant with a feather in its beak. Its eyes show the sadness. Below its head, one can see the dead bird. First picture sure looks like the mother is with the feather in the beak and the dead one is the chick, for the ventral feathers are white. At the back, a couple of birds seen mourning. I, I think so. It was repeatedly touching the body with its beak. The feather is from the dead bird, for I think it pulled it out while trying to move it. I read a lot but could not get any mention of cormorant eating dead birds. But yes, did read that in grief some birds pull their own feathers. Birds too have amygdala and hypothalamus and do possess neurotransmitters. Here are seen some cormorants with their chicks in a nest built on a tree. It was a treat to see the crested serpent eagle, for after spending some time sitting near the wetland and observing the activities of the birds found there, we headed towards the wetland swamps to spot the Saras crane. The guide had heard their call and so moved in that direction. I was leading and my mind was focused on the way, for I was in a hurry to cover the distance so as to not miss catching up with the cranes. I missed sighting this beautiful creature which was sitting on a branch of a tree by the side of the path. But how could a guide miss it? He ran up to catch with me and waved at me to come back and have a look at what he had spotted. A crested serpent eagle sitting so close as if posing for a good profile picture. I took a couple of shots and did not wait for an action so as to not miss clicking the cranes. This one seemed to be a juvenile. As soon as I got my shots, I continued further on the path to trace the cranes. All members of this species complex have a large looking head with long feathers on the back of the head giving them a mane and crested appearance. The face is bare and yellow joining up with the cirrus while the powerful feet are not feathered and heavily scaled they fly over the forest canopy on broad wings and tail and have white and black bars on the under surface of their tail they often feed on snakes giving them their name young birds show a lot of white on the head both birds in a pair build the nest but the female alone incubates the male guards in the female forages 
This is a picture of an adult crested serpent eagle. The little gravy is a small water bird with a pointed bill. Features can be seen in this photograph. It is an excellent swimmer and diver and pursues its fish and aquatic invertebrate prey underwater. It uses the vegetation skillfully as a hiding place. The interesting fact is that when the adult bird leaves the nest, it usually takes care to cover the eggs with beads. This makes it less likely to be detected by the predators. The young leave the nest and can swim soon after hatching and chicks are often seen carried on the backs of the swimming adults. This is a video showing the family of this beautiful bird swimming all lined up. As we moved on, my guide stopped me and pointed out to the Eurasian Eagle Owl. I could never had, have located it had it not been for the guide. He must have known that it had its nest with the chicks in it. For he just placed his telescope after reaching the point and showed us. Mother was sleeping protect, protecting its chicks. Thanks to my zoom lenses, I could get the pic for we couldn't get any closer. The tree was standing in water far away. The Eurasian eagle owl is a species of eagle owl that resides in much of Eurasia. Their orange eyes are distinctive, not seen here. It is referred to as the world's largest owl. The Eurasian eagle owl is largely nocturnal in activity, as are most owl species, with its activity focused in the first few hours after sunset and the last few hours before sunrise. The female incubates the eggs and broods the young, and the male provides food for her and when they hatch for the nestlings as well. Continuing parental care for the young is provided by both adults for about five months. Tamed Eagle owls have occasionally been used in pest control because of their size to deter large birds such as gulls from nesting. Black rumped flameback, the only golden backed woodpecker which has black colored throat and rump. Like other woodpeckers, this, spe this species has a straight pointed bill, a stiff tail to provide support against tree trunks, and zygodactyl feet with two toes pointing forward and two backwards. The long tongue can be darted forward to capture the insects. It sat on the tree, hiding its face. Jesseki Musse Sharma Rahao, common flameback, is a medium-sized golden-backed woodpecker with long, solid black mustachial stripes. The black eyes stripe is linked to the black rare neck stripe on both sexes. The male is crowned in red while the female is crowned in black. They have a black tail that contrasts with the red rump and only three toes for identification. Throat, face and rump are rufous or buff in color. Yellow crowned woodpecker was a medium sized woodpecker which was spotted and it has a densely spotted black and white back and blotchy brown and white underparts. Female has an all golden crown, male has a red four crown. This bird flies from tree trunk to tree trunk and then falls to look for insects. Male and female birds both excavate a hole for their nest where they lay their eggs. Bronze winged jacona is a wader. Like other jaconas, it forages on lilies and other floating aquatic vegetation. The long feet, just see the speck and concentrate on the long toes which are spread out on the leaf and this helps in spreading its weight equally, preventing it from sinking. The sexes are alike but females are slightly larger and are polyandrous, maintaining a harem of males during the breeding season in the monsoon rains. Males maintain territories with one male in the harem chosen to incubate the eggs and take care of the young. Females mate with multiple males, leading to intense sperm competition and the male that receives, termed as receivers, a clutch of eggs for incubation may destroy clutches in which their paternity is in doubt. Young chicks may be sheltered between the wings and carried to safety. 
they become independent of their father when they are about 10 weeks old the pheasant tailed chicken has elongated toes and nails that enable them to walk on floating vegetation in shallow lakes their preferred habitat they are the only chickens that migrate long distances and have different non-breeding and breeding plumages the pheasant tailed chicken forages by swimming or by walking on aquatic vegetation females are larger than males and are polyandrous laying several clutches that are raised by different males in their harem common kingfisher is a sparrow sized bird and has a typical short tailed large headed kingfisher profile it has blue and upper parts orange underparts and a long bill it feeds mainly on fish caught by diving and has special visual adaptations to enable it to see the prey underwater the glossy white egg are laid in a nest at the end of the burrow in a river bank they live singly and only pair during breeding season for food requirement they define their territories and fight it if intrusion occurs drowning the competitor by catching the beak it's a bird that takes your breath away every time streaking like an electric tracer into the water and merging happy eyed with a wriggling silver fish i did see it catching the fish but could not record the event the common kingfisher hunts from a perch 1 to 2 meters above the water on a branch post or a river bank bill pointing down as it searches for prey it bobs its head when food is detected to gauge the distance and plunges deeply down to seize its prey usually no deeper than 25 cm 10 in below the surface the wings are opened underwater and the open eyes are protected by the transparent third eyelid the bird rises beak first from the surface and flies back to its perch at the perch the fish it is adjusted until it is held near its tail beaten against the perch several times Once dead the fish is positioned lengthways and swallowed head first few times each day a small grayish pellet of fish bones and other indigestible remains is regurgitated 